Hi, welcome to my new video on 2G to 3G reselection. In this video, we'll, disc we'll discuss how 2G to 3G reselection works using the Huawei on radio access network. This video discusses uh, the software reselection strategy based on rank. Let's look at why do we have 2G? Why do we need 2G to 3G reselection? Telecom operators um, these days have provide GSM and UMTS radio access network services. The 2G network is preferred for voice calls and the 3G network is preferred for data services. So we must have a system that helps the mobile station to decide which to camp on. Typically, mo mobile operators set their network to prefer the 3G network mobile stations will prefer to camp on the 3G network wherever it is available. So how is this achieved? The 2G cells are configured with 3G neighboring cells, which they can select or hand over to. Now the set of parameters is defined, which are transmitted through system information messages, the SI messages, to the mobile stations. These SI messages help the mobile stations to decide when, how, and if to camp on a 3G cell. We also have additional BSS features such as fast reselection after call release, which helps to optimize the whole process, make the reselection faster. Let's look at how we can set this up on our GSM system. First, we need to configure that this, the 2G cell should allow for interact cell selection. This is achieved by configuring the set G cell and over basic command and setting the interact cell reselect enable to yes. This is done on our BSE. We also need to add 3G cells to the BSE, the 3G cells that can be selected or added over to from the 2G cells need to be added to the BSE. This is achieved by running the command add external 3G cell. Thirdly, we we'll need to declare neighboring cells for each 2G cell. The neighboring cells are typically 3G cells that are around the 2G cell or the 2G cells that it can the 3G cells that it can hand over to. These are this can sometimes be in the same site or be in the same location. In order to do this, we run the command add 3G neighboring cell. Now let's look at the criteria by which the 2G cell selects a 3G cell. The first criteria of concern will be the QSearch idle parameter. We, we know that Reselection occurs in the idle mode. So, what determines if the 2G cell should search? What determines what determines if a 2G cell should start searching for a 3G cell is the QSearch idle parameter. If this parameter is set between zero and six, this would imply. If it's set on zero, this will imply a Rx level value of minus 98 dBm. If it's set on six, this will imply a Rx level of minus 74 dBm. So, for instance, if we set a value at zero, it would imply that if our Rx level measured is less than minus 98 dBm, our mobile station should start searching for a 3G cell. Likewise, if we set our Rx value in between 8 to 14, for instance, if we were to set a value of 12, it would imply that if our measured Rx level from our serving 2G cell is greater than minus 62 dBm, then our mobile station should start searching for a 3G cell. We could also set a value of 15, which implies positive infinity. And this means that the mobile station will never search for a 3G cell for a 3G cell. Or we could set it to 7, 
which implies that the mobile station should always saturate 3G cell regardless of its measured RSL value. This is the preferred value. Now we look at the conditions that need to be met. After the 3G cells have been searched, what 3G cells can be selected or what 3G cells can be handed over to? For a 3G cell to be selected, it has to meet three conditions for five consecutive seconds. Condition one, the measured RS level of the 3G cell, 3G neighboring cell must be greater than the average RX level of the current serving cell plus a Q offset value. The possible values of the Q offset is between 0 to 15. If we have a Q offset value of 8, which implies 0 dB, this would mean that the measured RSCP of the neighboring 3G cell must be greater that the RS level of the 2G cell for it to meet this condition. The key offset value is preferably set to 0, which implies minus negative dB. When this is set to 0, this condition will always be met because the 3G cell value can never be lower than negative infinity. This is the preferred value to be set because we do not want to restrict uh, the selection of a 3G cell based on our recipe value but by the quality ECMO values. Now the second condition. The ECMO value measured from the 3G cell neighboring cell must be greater than the Q mean minus the Q mean offset. The possible values for a Q mean <coughs> and Q mean offset is between 0 and 7. For instance, if we were to set a Q mean value of 7, which implies minus 12 dB, and a Q offset value of 7, which implies 7 dB, it will imply that for a UMTS, UMTS cell to become a target cell to be selected, it must have an ECMO value greater than minus 19 dB. Now we look at the third condition. The UMTS RSCP value of the neighboring cells must be greater than an RSCP mean. We could also set a value from 0 to 15, which corresponds. 0 corresponds to minus 114 dBm, or 15 corresponds to minus 84 dBm. If we set a value of RSCP mean of 6, which corresponds to minus 102 dBm, it will imply that the 3 g neighboring cell can be selected if its measured RSCP value is greater than minus 102 dBm. Now let's look at a life network scenario. We would check the settings on a life network by running the command list gcellccu transix command. When we run this command, it will provide you the values of these parameters. So we look at if we have a Q offset of zero, condition one will always be met, but Q offset of zero corresponds to negative infinity. We go to condition two. Our ECMO value must be greater than the Q min minus Q min offset. We have a Q min of six, which implies minus 14 dBm and a Q-mean offset of 0, which implies 0 dBm. This implies that our ECMO value must be greater than minus 14 dBm. Condition 3. Based on these settings, our SCP mean is set to 6. 6 corresponds to minus 102 dBm. This implies that a 3G cell can be selected if he has a RSCP level greater than minus 102 dBm. So in summary, 3G cells that can be eligible to be selected must have a HECMO value greater than minus 14 dBm and the higher CP level greater than minus 102 dBm for five consecutive seconds for them to be eligible to be selected. 
Typically, we would have more than one 3D cell that would meet this criteria at a time. When this happens, this, the 3G neighboring cell with the highest RSCP, RSCP uh, measurement is selected. I hope this has been very helpful to you. Thank you for viewing.